Bone, Shadow, Minion. There are so many different ways to play Necromancer, but none are the life-draining Nova exploding madness that is an endgame blood build. In this video today, I'll finally be going through my vampire endgame blood Necromancer build. How I'm going to do this is by breaking down the skill points invested, take a look at our ability rotation, a dive into the required aspects, talk about affixes on your gear, talk about paragon points, then close the video out showing off some gameplay, as well as my thoughts on the build as far as how it performs as a whole in endgame nightmare dungeons and what have you. If, or I'm sorry, this is an update to my bloody golem leveling build, so if you'd like something to level with, you can find that linked in the upper right hand corner. If this is your first time on my channel, the way I do things here is by front loading the information in the video so you can decide if it's the right one for you. So you can find the entire build, gear affixes, aspects, and paragon points all linked in the description below. I've also annotated in the notes section the glyph priorities, ability rotations, and what have you. So if you just want to look at the build and see the rotation, just go ahead and jump forward in the video and to see how the rotation works and you're good to go. If that's all you wanted to know, you're free to shut the video down and get back to playing your Necromancer. I want to get you back to enjoying the game as fast as possible. If you are heading out, please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe. Each one of those things does help me out in a very, very huge way. Also, I have a massive playlist filled with all my guides and how to's for Diablo 4 linked in the description as well at the end of the video if you need help with other subjects. You can quickly navigate to any part of the video that interests you the most using the chapters in both the timeline and the description. Lastly, please don't forget to follow me on Twitch where I will be streaming Diablo 4 as well as all the many Diablo 4 Twitch drops. Let's get started here on my endgame blood necromancer build in Diablo 4. All right, so let's take a look at this build and look at the skill allocation. Going here and into our skill tree, let's talk about this skill assignment first. So the four, <laughs> there's six, there's six skills we're going to be using. It's going to be Corpse Explosion, Corpse Tendrils, followed by Blood Wave, Blood Mist, and then Iron Maiden, and lastly, Blood Surge. What we're going to be doing pretty much is using Corpse Tendrils to pull things in for a ripping blood wave, either an overpowered blood mist or just a destructive blood surge. So let's take a look at this. We're going to go from the top to the bottom here. Now, even though I have points here, we're not going to be using hemorrhage at all. They're just points to uh, turn the next line online. So then we're going to get blood surge here. Now, of course, Blood Surge is going to be doing 28% damage to everything on the screen, followed by 70% damage Nova around us. After that, we do get a buff to Blood Surge's innate damage based off of how many enemies we drain, up to 50%. So it's quite nice. We enhance it to give us some health, and then also we get Paranormal Blood Surge, which every five Blood Surges, it auto-overpowers. This is just another source of of overpower for our build and it's crucial because we will be doing tons of overpower. We're going to use this ability here to give us some corpses on lucky hit. Even though lucky hit is kind of a finicky mechanic, trust me, you'll have plenty of corpses generated from that and a lot of other things in this build. With blood mist here, we're going to have this um, give us basically unstoppable, which will trigger our ghost walker aspect. We're also going to use the explosive mist aspect to use this to also explode corpses. And when we improve it, we're going to have it so that it reduces cooldown when we overpower, and it will produce corpses. So this will generate three corpses for us, which is crucial whenever we're getting into a boss fight. We just need some corpses to kind of have to uh, explode or get some stuff from because we're going to have aspects that allow us to get both essence from bloody orbs or blood orbs and also blood orb generation whenever we consume corpses. So this is absolutely crucial for us. Now for our corpse explosion here, just our standard definition, all the way down into Plague Corpse Explosion, which is going to be nice because it's going to give us an 8% bonus for something that is slowed, stunned, or vulnerable. Corpse Tendrils does all three of those, so it gives us a 24% increase to damage. It is awesome. So Corpse Explosion is even better with this. And what's nice here is, yes, with uh, the aspect of Explosive Mist, Blood Mist can trigger Corpse Explosions. But you'll find that it won't do enough because of the nerf to Blood Mist between the beta and now to actually bring the cooldown all the way to zero. So we keep it on our bar because now we have Blood Mist that will corpse explode and we have a corpse explode on demand. And corpse explode also generates essence for us and it increases damage for six seconds after consuming a corpse. So you just get a lot of utility out of corpses way so more than usual. 
Death's Embrace is going to increase our damage and have us take less damage because we're going to be in close combat the entire time. Iron Maiden here, we don't care about the damage at all. It only has one real purpose, well, two real purposes. One is generating essence for us. You gain five essence for each enemy cursed. Only the first time, but still, that's free essence. And also, it gives us life whenever we kill anyone that has the curse on them. So it's just a way to keep us topped off constantly, and it works out beautifully. Uh, amplify damage for just a little bit more damage in this. Then we're going to get Corpse Tendrils, which just brings this bad boy online. Only one point here. I've got an uh, item contribution of three. But what we're going to get here is that they become slowed when they're in range of the Corpse Tendrils. And they have a 30% chance to drop Blood Orbs. Blood Orbs, remember, are giving us essence. They are giving us... Um, uh, uh, tons of damage from all of our many, many, many Paragon points. Blood Orbs are going to be a very useful resource for you because we're a blood build. Uh, gruesome Mending just to open up Coalesced Blood, which while healthy, your blood skills deal 18% damage. Also, Drain Vitality, hitting enemies with blood skills has up to a 25% chance to fortify you for 8% base life. Might as well take it because you're going to be popping off with your blood abilities. Tides of Blood here gives you a, I think this is 15% natively, yeah, 15% uh, damage increase to overpower damage, and it's doubled while you're healthy. Guess what? We're going to be healthy the majority of this build, so that is a 30% bonus, uh, obviously not with my item contribution, uh, and it is a pretty substantial one. I'm going to go with Blood Wave here. It's going to give us a knockback, and it's going to give us three Blood Orbs. We're taking the aspect, of, or the title aspect, which is then going to generate nine Blood Orbs every time you use Blood Wave, and Blood Orbs are the name of the game for this goddamn build. For our passives here, we've got Standalone, so we're going to 18% DR because we're sacrificing all of our pets, and we're also going to use Memento Mori here. Sacrificing both Skeletal Warriors and Skeletal Mages increases our sacrifice bonus by 60%. And lastly, we have Rathma's Vigor, which is going to get, make it so that when we're healthy for 15 seconds, your next Blood Skill guaranteed overpowers. So it allows you to use Blood Wave Overpower, and when Blood Wave is on cooldown, use Blood Mist Overpower or Blood Surge, but Blood Surge, remember, has its own built-in overpower after 5 casts. It is absolutely batshit insane. So what we're also going to be doing is taking a look at our Book of the Dead. We're going to sacrifice our Skeletal Skirmishers for increased crit strike chance. We're going to sacrifice our uh, Bone Mages for overpower damage. Remember, this gets buffed by 60%. So this doesn't just give us 40% overpower damage. It actually gives us 64% overpower damage. And then Golems, we're sacrificing the Iron Golem to get a 30% increased crit strike damage. It all works out quite nicely. Um, I have all my Paragon points and everything activated here, but we have 657 overpower damage. And I've swapped this around from a lot of things in my build, uh, where this used to be a much higher value, but now we have it lower, and it gives us a lot more punching power. But now, let's talk about some rotation. I lied to you, we're talking about rotation, not gear. It's a farce, a ruse. So... How this really works is you're going to be looking at these stacks of Rathmos. That's going to be pretty crucial because it's going to dictate how you open up an engagement. If you have 15 stacks, you're going to want to open up with Blood Wave or Blood Mist. If Blood Wave is on cooldown, I would open up with Blood Mist once you've corralled everything together with a Corpse Tendrils or something of the sort. Because keep in mind, this only works on your next Blood Skill. So you can still do damage with Corpse Explosion and Corpse Tendrils as you see fit. So let's kind of go up here and we'll use uh, Blood Wave to start us off. And you don't want to curse things first. Let's kind of corral everything around. I don't want to waste the Blood Wave's capability to kind of make a big, huge wave. You want to line things up. It's a very active playstyle. So there we go. And now as that kind of goes off, we're going to Corpse Tendrils in everything. Bring them into us, but right click, right click, right click, right click. Just go ahead and kind of spam that while I'm also pressing 1 to blow up all these corpses. Kind of like talking about it slowly kind of makes it seem like I'm taking tons of damage, but I had to like kind of break it apart to kind of show you how to do stuff. Well, we got another thing here. Let's go ahead and curse it to get our, uh, to get some resources. Now, I probably should have cursed that other group that we were taking a look at. Here's a corpse tendril, pull him back in, and just keep blowing them up. But you know what? We're coming around. Oh, we killed him. I was going to say, we're coming around to this stacks of 15 happening. So what I also want you to see is this. So we have this aspect active, the untimely death. And untimely death basically means that as we heal beyond 100%, we get a damage bonus. So let's go ahead and heal beyond 100%. My aspect's max is 44. So let me go ahead and do that even more. And what I've done right there is use a potion to trigger that. We'll use Corp Tendril to pull them in, and we'll use Poison Risk. And that just rips things up. <clears throat> so let me show you this right here. 
So each percent of your max life you heal beyond 100% grants you 0.5% bonus overpower damage on your next overpowering attack, up to, in this case, 44, but at max 60. So this is how you can see that that's there. And you can use your potions as a superficial dam damage buff when you're at max health. So, potion. Oh, this brings us up to 60-something, 70-something. Ooh, just shy of 88. Now, whatever this number is, half of that, because remember it's 0.5%, is the damage bonus being added into your overpower. So this is giving me a 44% damage buff, and it's absolutely bonkers. Which I don't even think is a term people say anymore. So here we go. Another opening up with Blood Wave. We got everything kind of corralled together. I'm going to go ahead and use my tendrils, pull them all in, curse them, then right click. Just kind of keep, and then using my corpse explosions at the same time, kind of keep things kind of locked in. You know what? Things are getting kind of dicey. It, not really, but I just want to show it for the sake of the, the video. I have corpse tendrils. Now we're going to Blood Mist again, and it allows me just to rip through stuff. And that member, that Blood Mist, is an immune, unstoppable movement action. So you can just kind of use it, pull everything together, corpse explosions, and then right click to just kind of blow, burst things down. But you know what that guy? He's got his poison attack, or uh, I'm sorry, his uh, vampire attack. You can use blood mist to counter that uh, so that he can't actually get it going. And as you also have a ton of lucky hit, you can use all these corpse explosions to generate more corpses for you. And that's going to be crucial when you're fighting bosses because you're using that lucky hit. This is generating corpses for you. The lucky hit is generating corpses for you. You have a lot of corpse generation. And those blood orbs that drop are also going to help you out as well. So now we've talked about the rotation. Let's now truly move into a discussion about gear. Well, I had originally recorded this in the game, but I think that it's easier to do both the aspects and the gear affixes together. So let's talk about those together. So the first thing we're going to do is the helmet. Now, the helmet is the has aspect of explosive mist here. An aspect of explosive mist allows it so that our mist triggers corpse explosion for us. The cooldown portion is not that crucial. It's a nice to have. Get as max of a roll as you can. But if you get a point two, don't worry about it. The big thing here is that it blows up those corpses for us. For the affixes, we want cooldown reduction, total armor, and max life. Again, the cooldown reduction is less so for... Uh, blood mist and more so for corpse tendrils and blood wave. We want those things to be off cooldown much, much better, much faster. Aspect of the protector here is for our chest armor. And that is going to give us, well, let me just go ahead and fix this problem. Why is that happening? There we go. Uh, damaging an elite enemy grants you a barrier absorbing up to X damage for 10 seconds. So th because this is a static number, you want to get an ancestral with this because that's going to allow for a larger number if you pull a base aspect of the protector or your aspect of protector from your codex unless you have a high enough level it will not be a good aspect so you want to get this off of an ancestral hopefully but you get a nice good barrier here lasts a good chunk of time for our actual affixes we're going for damage reduction damage reduction from close damage reduction from distant and max life why we want three different types of aspects from or damage reductions here, is because the close and distant, because it has a caveat attached to it, it gives us far more damage reduction, something like 31% on close enemies or injured enemies, stuff like that. So make sure you do that. And for gloves, we have the tidal aspect. So Blood Wave fires two additional waves, each dealing 50 to 60% less damage from than the previous. You want this to be maxed out at 60%. But for our gloves affixes, we want ranks of Blood Surge. It makes our Blood Surge do far more damage. It's crucial. Crit Strike Chance, Overpower Damage, and Lucky Hit up to X% percent Chance to Heal. Overpower Damage is, goes without saying why we want that, right? <clears throat> it's the biggest focus of our build. Then for our pants, we want Aspect of the Embalmer. One thing to keep in mind here with the chest and the pants, if you swap the two locations, it's no big deal. It's not better to have the, the, the pants be Embalmer or Protector than the other. Don't worry about it. If there's something's in a different slot, that's totally fine. There's only one thing that needs to have, there's two things that need to be in specific slots, and I'll get to those when we get to them. But Aspect of the Embalmer here is going to make it so consuming a corpse has a chance to, per to spawn a Blood Orb. 20 to 30% chance. So that's Blood Orbs are going to come online for us. We're going to talk about that in the Paragon section. It's a really, really nice little boon. But for the bonuses, Ranks to Blood Mist is going to lower the uh, cooldown reduction. I know that's, that's not that important, but I'm just saying as far as the Aspect goes. Um, but also Max Life. Damage reduction from close and dodge chance against close. All going to be very, very nice here. For boost, for boots, <laughs> we want the ghost walker aspect. 
while unstoppable and for four seconds after, that's crucial, you gain 10 to 25% increased movement speed. So you want this to roll at a 20% or higher. And the reason for this is because the other blood mist aspect is the blood soaked aspect. Let me bring that up here for you real quick. So what this does is it removes the movement speed penalty from blood mist and you do shadow damage. Who cares? That's nice. But ghost Walker does the same thing because take a look at this blood, blood mist here does your movement speed is reduced by 20%. Well, if ghost Walker rolls at a 20% or higher, <clears throat> we get the same benefit. And on top of it, it lasts for four seconds after it, it turns off and you can move freely through enemies. So you're not barred by anything for that four seconds after. It's a nice get out of jail free card. It's a very good aspect and it's on boots, which are a pretty low impact slot. The blood soaked aspect is an offensive aspect. So it needs to go on a weapon, gloves, amulet or ring. It's a nice trade off here. For our uh, affixes here, we absolutely want movement speed. It's number one. If you got nothing else, you're fine. Dodge chance, damage reduction while injured, essence cost reduction. For our weapon, we want to go with a sword because a sword's implicit bonus is crit strike damage. A scythe is health on kill. A wand is crit is uh, I'm sorry is lucky hit chance. So we definitely want to go with a sword. For its um, aspect, we're going blood bathed. So now our blood surge, whoopsies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our uh, blood surges, Nova's echo again after a short delay. Dealing, we want ideally 60% less damage. Then overpower damage here, crit strike damage, damage to close enemies, and core skill damage. Before I move on, uh, one thing I want to say here about all these affixes on my gear, I don't have all these affixes. I, I do not have the max, best, absolute, awesome, kick my dick in affixes i just have what i've got i've got as close to these as i can get maybe i only have two or three of these maybe i only have one or two of them i'm the biggest thing you want to focus on in your gear is your armor value because you want to get your armor value up to an innate 88 percent dr and you want to get uh your aspects having the best rolls don't worry about the affixes worry about that absolute last get the first two things first and then you deal with what you deal with I don't want you to look at this build and go, oh crap, I'll never get anywhere close to that. I don't even have this crap. So just play the game and have fun with it. Use the aspects as they come your way, turn them on, and you'll get more and more and more value out of this build as you jump into all these affixes. I don't want this, this section to overwhelm you as it were. Now for amulet, this needs to be grasping veins. So if the boots need to be ghost walker, this needs to be grasping veins because this, uh, Jesus Christ, why is it doing that? This, that, ha-ha, gained a 10 to 20% increased crit strike chance for six seconds when you cast corpse tendrils and you deal 30 to 60% bonus crit strike damage to enemies damaged by corpse tendrils. If you can't tell, corpse tendrils is such a huge portion of our build because it turns on so much damage for us. So cooldown reduction, damage reduction from close enemies, movement speed, and damage reduction while fortified for our affixes here. Our rings are both the exact same, but one is untimely death. We talked about this here, but untimely death is basically the same one that's going to now allow us to overheal and gain percentage damage bonus to our overpower. In both rings, we want max life, crit strike chance, crit strike damage, overpower damage. And then our last one is aspect of potent blood. So while at full life, blood orbs grant 10 to 20 essence. This is crucial for boss fights. You've got your blood wave that generates nine damn blood orbs. That's going to give you 90 to what? Uh, uh, 180 essence. So you have tons of blood orbs just laying around there for you that are going to be just tons of little batteries and whatnot. Then lastly, torturous aspect. Enemies afflicted by your Iron Maiden have a 15 to 25% chance to be stunned for one second when they deal direct damage. And this is a shield. I use a shield because the shield gives you damage reduction and block chance. I love those two. Cooldown reduction here, max life, crit strike chance, and damage reduction while fortified. If you want, you can use a two-handed sword. You absolutely need to use a two-handed weapon. I find that the trade-off isn't worth it because you don't do as much damage. The shield already increases your damage by 90%. I know it says 80%, but the attack speed difference plus the actual innate 80 actually equates to 90% damage bonus by using a shield versus just simply using a two-handed sword. So you lose 10% damage. It's not enough for me to sacrifice uh, another aspect. So 
Those are all of your affixes and all of your aspects. Make sure you're putting your rubies in your weapons. You want to make sure you put topazes in all of your armor because every single control impairing effect, so blind, slow, stun, whatever, you get 10% DR for each topaz you put in. And jewelry here just to get you close to 88% innate armor uh, um, damage reduction. We do armor uh, skulls in all of our jewelry. Now, as far as our Paragon board and Paragon points go, let's take a look. So we have the starting board. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through each board that we've got. Then I'm going to talk about each glyph. So this is the rough order which you're supposed to do things. You're going to start with your starting board. You're going to progress into Blood Begets Blood. Then you're going to go into Flesh Eater on the left. Make sure you look at the orientation of these boards. It is important as you're selecting them. Then you're going to go Blood Bath followed by Scent of Death with Imbiber. So as far as your uh, rare glyphs, you're going to focus here on Control because this is going to give us damage to crowd control targets and we're going to get a 20% damage to stunned or frozen enemies. Uh, that is huge. It's just a flat damage buff. We're going to be doing a ton of crowd control with corpse tendrils, so it's really going to get back to us. Then we're also going to look at Dominate here. Dominate is going to have an increase to our overpower damage for every five willpower we put into this glyph uh, socket, like it's, its radius. And then also, when you overpower an enemy, all damage they take from you and your minions is increased by 12% for five seconds. It's just so juicy. Moving here over here into Flesh Eater, we get blood drinker now this one's pretty crucial so what this is actually going to do here is allow you to get blood orbs to fortify you for 6.7 percent of your max life what i want to tell you is you can put blood drinker down here in this section and put control over here if you want just whatever turns <clears throat> blood drinker on for you because if you're if you're running into survivability problems this is what's going to give you all that fortify so maybe you do this one first and then control second control gives you conversely a ton of damage so just kind of swap these two out as needed depending upon if you're suffering a lot of damage or i'm sorry if you're suffering a lot of damage and you want to deal more damage this is a willpower socket so you do not want to swap it into this place. If you take a look here, if we're using D4 builds, we have 54 willpower here, whereas these two give us 39 and 39. So this dominate is going to benefit the most in this socket. Our other two ones are going to be territorial. So for every five decks, we get 7.6% increased damage to close targets. It's massive. And we also gain 10% damage reduction against close enemies. It is so Juicy. We're going to get a nice, good DR buff and a plenty of damage increase. And then our last one is going to be Imbiber, which is going to give us willpower. Uh, it's going to every five willpower is going to increase the damage while healthy. And as you already know, we are going to be healthy the majority of the time with this build with so much healing we have in, and also increases uh, potion healing by thirty percent. Remember, potions are used as a damage buff for this build, so this allows you to get those stacks from uh, Untimely Death online a lot faster. My allergies are getting worse and worse as this video goes on. But as far as legendary so, uh, nodes, what you're really going to do is you're going to focus on grabbing all the sockets first. You're going to go up, then left, then right, then down, and then grab the legendary nodes in whatever order you want after that. Um, I've kind of already highlighted things, and if you didn't, if you don't really, if you forget what I said, it's here in the notes section. Paragon board, it shows you the order in which to go, and then get legendary nodes after you've acquired all of your glyph sockets. And then, um... It gives you glyph priority to, is to what to get, ones to get to level 15 first with control, dominate, territorial, imbiber, and blood drinker last. We don't even care if that one gets level 15 or not. But hopefully this helps you out now with your um, paragon points. Let's show the build off. So everything said and done, how does this build actually perform? And honestly, I feel like a goddamn badass with this build. And I think that's why I've kind of named it the vampire build. I, everyone's doing that. I think it's kind of like trite. But honestly... It's sick to sit in the center of everything, base tank it, and then just explode and just keep causing more and more explosions between your blood surge, between your corpse explosions, between your tendrils and sucking things in, and then just getting a overpower stack of destruction, either on blood mist, blood wave, or on another blood surge. It is so fun to do. And what I think is really cool about it is you can kind of run a red line a little bit more than you can with a lot of builds. You're kind of like, oh man, I don't know, this is feeling, I'm feeling, I feel like I'm dealing with a lot of damage. And 
when I first put this build together, when I kind of pivoted away from my Bloody Golem build, I was like, uh, is this not going to be as fun? It is so much more fun because I can just wade through packs of elites without caring. Because the more that's on the screen, the stronger I am. I have more damage reduction. I can do more keying damage off of them. I can suck up more essence and get more life from using Iron Maiden on all of them. And I'm just ripping through everything with blood surge after blood surge after blood surge after corpse tendrils after explosion and then missing it all together and then when i fight a boss it's the same thing i open up with a really overpowered blood surge or with a really overpowered blood wave and then i just kind of burst through all of my essence jump into blood mist generate more corpses corpse tendrils corpse explosions on them if they spawn any ads use iron maiden on them to give me a little bit more essence and then just kind of rinse and repeat and the cool thing is that i just feel unstoppable and in the moments where i am like a little bit sketchy i really just pop an extra potion and then just keep using blood surge to continuously heal myself that's the biggest thing is that i'm getting so many healing sources out of drawing health from enemies getting these blood orbs and then using the paragon nodes which are even more giving me more damage increase or helping me fortify through these blood orbs. So I just find this to be a very fun build. But with all that being said, I will say it's a very active build. And I think if you are struggling with the Necromancer as is, this is going to add a lot of complexity into the class for you because you do have to have, you're gonna generate a muscle memory for it to know when roughly 15 seconds has been up so you can use Rathmos for your overpower. To know kind of roughly when your uh, blood surge is ready. And if you've never used blood mist, you're going to get locked into, and I, I even do it in this video, I, I get locked into a couple uh, crowd control things and I'm like sitting there waiting for it to break. Oh crap, I could have used blood mist to push myself out. And it's just going to be a little bit of a process. So if you do pivot into this build, I just want to be upfront with you and tell you it is going to be a difficult build because you will need to use all the buttons a lot of times like you're not going to be able to play this on controller if you're not accustomed to playing controller like if you're playing on a console you'll be fine but if you're going from like oh you know i play on controller when i'm kind of chilling and laying back a little bit harder with this build because you need to be a lot more active so if you want a really strong active stay in the face of everything and just kill your way through the competition necromancer build this is absolutely the one for you i will go so far as to say this is the best blood necromancer build you can currently make with uh, the exception of stuff like the infinite mist one which is just going to be patched away they've already said they're going to reduce cooldown reduction the best thing about this build is it's a bit more of an evergreen build overpower is currently tuned down it's going to probably be buffed and we don't rely on any specific uniques we don't rely on anything that is completely busted right now so this build is only stands to get much stronger as time goes on so hopefully this build gives you a really cool way to play blood not blood dragon play blood vampires in um uh what's this game called diablo 4 <laughs> but if you have any other questions you have run into any issues please by all means go ahead and let me know in the comment section below i have a minion build coming out next which is just going to absolutely shit your tits off that's not even a term that people use but i'm going to use it right here now today i also have another rogue build which is an update to my archer build uh, that I'm going to be bringing out uh, probably about tomorrow or the day after. So if you are playing Rogue, you'll have those. If you're playing a minion build and you're struggling in the end game, don't worry. This minion build is going to really pop things off for you. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care. <laughs>